to Inside the Issues. I'm Alex Cohen. 2020 has been a very anxiety-filled year for so many of us, especially young people in the hospital. Traditionally, many hospitals use music therapy to help soothe young patients and help them heal. But due to COVID, making music is something that needs to now happen at a safe social distance. More on how some are doing that virtually from our Ariel Wessler. You could call Julia Summers the music woman. She's a music therapist in the pediatric unit at Northridge Hospital, but these days she has to interact with her young patients virtually. Over the internet it's harder because I can't hear every little nuance, but there's still so much that we can do. Music has been shown to offer therapeutic benefits, especially in children experiencing anxiety, depression, pain, or a prolonged stay in the hospital. It helped take my mind off of the pain. Sessions can either be very active and we can be engaging in active music making or um, sometimes it's receptive and a patient will lay back and kind of turn inward and I'll help them connect to their breath and the, the natural rhythms in their body. Each session runs 30 to 45 minutes and the children can choose from a wide range of instruments, but one of the most popular is the ukulele. The one problem with the ukulele is sometimes it's not tuned. <laughs> And Summers notices the transformation not just in her patients, but their families too. Having them see their child really, you know, enjoying something and thriving, you know, in music can be really helpful for them too, because that's, you know, can be very intense for a parent or a caregiver. She says during these tough times, people need connection and a way to express themselves more than ever, whether it's singing, songwriting. Or just playing a tune, she believes music has the power to strike a chord with almost anyone. People don't realize that all the time. They're like, oh, I'm not a singer. Or, I can't play that. And I'm like, no, 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 you can. And spreading a little joy to her patients has been just as meaningful for her. It's really been just such, such a wonderful um, experience in my life. And I, I'm just going to keep on building on it. Uh, nice. Yes, that was great. And Ariel Wessler joins us now. Ariel, I always love it when people have these very niche job descriptions. How did she get involved with this particular area of music and, and music therapy? Yeah, it's a good question. She actually has an undergrad degree in musical theater and says she had no idea that there was another way to use music aside from performing. But she knew a man who had a stroke and he couldn't speak. He had aphasia, but he could sing perfectly. And that really blew her away. She was amazed and quickly realized that there was power in music that she never knew about and fell in love with it. So she ended up getting her master's uh, in music therapy. And she says, you know, music, the music not only helps kids in the hospital feel better, but really can change their perception, she's found, of hospitals themselves as scary places and uh, help ease, ease some of their fears. Especially when it comes to the uke, that one really hit home with us. Uh, my nine-year-old has been playing the ukulele nonstop, and it really does bring joy into the home. But even ukuleles, they are not cheap. How do they get the funding to, to support this program? Yeah, I love the ukulele. It's so fun to listen to. And the program uh, is supported through a grant from the Music Man Foundation, if that sounds familiar. It's named, of course, after the musical written by Meredith Wilson. His widow started the foundation in 1998 with this mission to empower people using the energy of music to make positive changes in not only their own lives, but also the lives of others, Alex. Well, a really lovely story. We appreciate your bringing it to us. Ariel Wessler, thanks so much. Thanks, Alex.